how we can identify hot, warm, or cold lead only by asking questions and understanding where the client is now and his journey. This is again what we're going to do further. Um, again, I'm going to skip it because this is what the general public thing feels about sales, and this is what we are going against of, right? We're enforcing, brainwashing, manipulating, we're only interested in money. Well, is this true? Kind of. But if we are starting to go from the different place in our head, we start to feel, I want to see first, is there any problem to be solved for this client? and I can solve it for him. Because, let me ask you, you might not know enough yet about the real estate, but do you feel that whenever you have enough knowledge, you will want to help people? Yeah? yeah? The level of the service that you will provide will be like what, like average, or you want to have a, to give a highest possible highest service? Possible. Highest possible service, right? So coming from that place, it's gonna be, a little bit wrong to stop people from receiving your service, right? So if you know that you're going to be the best sales person for your mom or for your sister, or for your brother, do you want other people to have this type of service as well? So sometimes <laughs> for the other people to be able to have this service, we have to act maybe a little bit in a way that average public thing is rude. I mean interrupting people, calling people through the day when they do not expect us to call, and that's completely fine, because we have a good intentions, right? If I feel that I'm calling someone to sell, and I want to make money, and my, I only have like a dollar sign in my eyes, how will I feel myself about calling? I will feel like, I will feel like, oh, I'm an asshole, like, I am a, I'm a bad person doing this. But if you feel and your intention is to help, you are more eager to call. And that's going to be a big thing for you guys to have a call reluctance. Call reluctance is avoiding the calling, avoiding the cold calling, avoiding a age leads calling. This is what you're going to have because you're afraid of rejection, because you're afraid of bad reaction. But how you can look at it in the way that when the, I always give this example, when the Emirates cabin crew is going through the plane with a trolley with a coffee and tea, and she's asking, tea, coffee, tea, coffee, and you say, oh no, thank you, or no. If she's getting upset that you don't want to have your tea and coffee, she knows that she's given a service and she still wants to provide it to the highest level. Despite if you want it or not, it doesn't matter for her. This is what we have to accept. We're going to have a lot of rejection. We're going to have a lot of pushback. With our sales skills, we're going to have less and less of that. At least if the person will not be interested, they will be nice to us because we never gave them an opportunity to be rude. We never acted like an average salesperson who is trying to sell them something and who is convincing, manipulating, obliged, and all of that and more of all is needy. Okay, so I'm gonna, oh yeah, I actually like that. I um, spoke about this in a, uh, in a briefly before. We can treat our career as a low skill, someone who couldn't find another high position job with the big basic salary of paying, or we can treat our position as someone who has an unlimited potential of earning actually. Right? We don't have a limit <laughs> of earning. And this is the lowest paid job if you don't put the work in and the highest paid if you do. So I like to think about the career progression of the salesperson as a doctor or a writer or a scientist. This is what I was writing as well. What I mean by that is when the doctor finishes his education, right? He and he, for example, doing a brain surgery. He's doing the only brain surgery. Most of the time, he has two, three types of operation he's performing, right? It's not like, oh, I'm going to be a dentist tomorrow, then I'm going to be promoted to, I don't know, like ENT doctor. No, it's not like that. 
but he is getting so perfect in doing this thing that his income is what? Increasing. He's rising his prices, he's moving to a different hospitals where he's paid more. Why? Because he's always perfecting the skills. And all of these people, doctors, writers, scientists, they always learn something new. They are in consistent process of self-improvement because if you as a doctor and you don't know about the latest uh, science behind a new devices, a new thing, you're outdated. You're not going to make any money. Other people are going to kind of out-doctor you, right? So this is how we are as well here. And again, guys, we're not only focusing on what the company is giving us because we train, we support, we mentor, we show you the way, but that should be like Mr. Shadi likes to say. <laughs> In the school, you come to the class, you, you've been taught, you have a lectures, but then you have a homework. And the homework is something for you. You do it on your own. And your mark, actually, and your knowledge, most of the time depends on how good are you with your homework, right? If you're not doing your homework or you're doing like you will not be able to perform in the next class, right? Because this is all, all rehearsing. And again, it doesn't mean that uh, we want you to do consistent studies, right? But it means that we want you to find one or two ways how you want to improve yourself as a specialist and build up the plan to improve. Because if you're gonna work uh, even in the industry or if you will work with Ray White or not gonna work with Ray White, this is a path of um, progressing in your career and making more money. It's to outlearn and outperform everyone else. This is the only way, right? Okay. Four principles of sales. <laughs> Answer no is normal. We we will be okay with no, right? Because 90% of people are gonna say no, that's fine. We are building credibility and trust. This is what we are focusing on. Because only if we build credibility and trust through our neutral approach, through our approach not being a salesperson, not trying to push, not trying to convince, as I say, push solution down the throat. No, Mr. Klein, that's really good. Oh, no, I actually don't agree with you. Or because and... No, it's not going to work. Um, testimonials and reviews. This is what we are collecting. This is what we are focusing on. Right? Everyone now is going to, to any business, any restaurants. What we check the first thing? Google reviews, right? Google reviews. Could us check Google reviews on Google? Right? Or how many stars? 4.7 or how many? This is what you have start to, to collect. That's why I was talking about social media. This creates your own familiarity for people. Like they see you as someone who is doing the things that other people are getting results. And we are social creatures. We want to be connected. We want to work with someone who is giving results already to someone like me, right? That's why I was, I was telling you that. If I am... Um, I'm choosing to maybe focus on uh, demographics of families with kids, moving to Dubai. I mean, it's not going to be easy for you to do it with the social media leads. However, uh, in my social media, for example, I will talk a lot about this spectrum of sales. I will show how uh, the families or my clients purchase the house. This is the type of the, you know, home they selected, that's completion of the place, that they, they, how they got it, they rented it, they, they make so much money or make less money. This is what I'm talking about, right? And love what you do. Love what you do is, yeah. as in what we are saying. If you will feel at some point that, uh, hey, real estate is something what I don't like, that's okay to say, I, I don't like it. Of course.
I mean, it's up yes, to you to decide. Nice. Once you will dig the first. Was it easy for you to start selling the cars? Was it just like this? You just walk no, in no, and no, got all no, the no, knowledge? No, no, no. I don't want us to talk about convince. I want us to remove the convince from our language. Because if you think we, we have to convince customer, we're going to keep convincing and we're going to be like, what? Every other salesperson trying to sell me something. You don't have to convince. He has to convince himself. Yeah, but this is not convince. Of course. After then, you were going to keep asking him questions. So, I mean, guys, and, and I'm saying that's okay to try do, to do that. If you will be able to fulfill your KPIs, monthly goals, with uh, the, the skills of you trying to convince people, that's going to be fine. But if you will feel like, you know, the convincing is not enough anymore and you want to go like on the further stage and you don't want to feel like you're in a boxing game with a client no, no, no. Any, every no, no. time. You have to feel how yeah. this work or work or out. But, you have to grow. Work, you need some playing. <laughs> okay, guys. So, which closing techniques do you know? Okay. I scaled it from when I was young. Okay. Trading yeah. Was young, nine years. Okay, so do you think they still work the same way as nine this years is ago? The, what we got, I get it from the market. After that, I got some courses from the land group yeah. and from the hotel. Okay, it's courtesy okay so we just because we don't have much time, I'm sorry, yeah. guys. Yeah, I just want to go to the like, which can you can you give me like, okay, so the sales techniques, the client is coming, you're yeah, doing X, Y, Z. Okay. Uh, no, but the closing uh, techniques. Uh, closing. Yeah. Closing in the automotive is totally different. Uh, yeah. Okay. So which one you know? Trade in, uh, if we have a, like another car and we okay. need to make a trade in. Okay. Uh, so we have to agree that after that. We have but this to is more like a sales process that you go into. Yeah. yeah. And let's yeah, let us do a deal. You have to pay. <laughs> okay. So no no structure then, as I can see. It's like you don't. You don't have, okay, so I have to do this, then I have to do this, and I have to do this. You don't have that structure of closing, as you say. Okay. What if he's saying, yeah, well, I need to think about it. So he's not a hot. No, I was hot, but I need to think. You know, I have many options to evaluate. I need to think about it. Okay, so do you want to be... Or do you want to know what to do exactly when the yeah, client is telling us? This is what we're going to go in the future, okay. right? Not today, we don't have time for that, okay, cool? Okay. All the objection, I need to think about it, I need to talk to my spouse. Um, what else? Um, partner objection, time objection, it's not a good time, I need to wait, like all of this, we're going to go through verbal age, what you say exactly in response to that. I'm not going to give you like, Oh, you have to go, you know, you have to understand your client, you have to do this. Okay, so, okay, Olga, thank you so much. But what do you mean exactly how I'll do that? I don't know. I'm going to give you the verbalage that you will have to understand first, memorize, and rehearse. Okay? This is the self-assessment, guys. And that's what it's good to do about everything you do in your life. You can be reactive, you can be active, and you can be proactive. And you can do that in a different um, kind of areas of your life. You can have a different approach. So reactive means things are coming to me and I react in. And in a work environment, I would say, okay, guys, so how many calls you did today? Oh, Olga, I, I, I never had any new leads, so I had no calls. Okay, so that's... Okay, but you have the clients to follow up. You can go approach your manager. I want to call age leads because I want to have like 25 conversations because this is my plan for myself. And I know if I'm going to go 25 conversations each and every day regardless, what I'm going to do in the end, I'm going to build up my pipeline because the pipeline 
the line of the clients which are standing there waiting for you, ready to buy in a month, and then two months, and then three months, how it forms from your consistent follow-up and from your consistent calls. It's not like you're going to be only dependent on, I have this client today, I called him, he's buying, great. No, that's a very unpredictable way to make a living because you cannot understand what do you have in the next month? What do you have in two months? Huh? Too much follow-up. We will talk about follow-up. Too much follow-up, useless follow-up is not good. We don't even call it. I don't want to use the word follow-up when we talk with the client. I use the word, I'm just coming back to you. You see? When I'm saying, I'm just coming back to you, what is my status? Yeah, if it's... Suspense, yeah, if there's something more. Yeah, maybe you have some new... Something you, and who needs this? I'm just coming back to you. I was busy, I'm coming back to you, so where I was. Oh, I'm just following up with you. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just checking on. Who needs, client needs me or I need client? If I'm checking in. Okay, so do you want to go in a chasing mode or you want the client to chase you? So this is how you use your verbally, how you use the words in your everyday communication with the client. You're gonna make him feel that you are a high authority, you are the doctor. You are in the middle of brain surgery. Sorry, I was on the meeting of the clients. I wasn't able to respond to your call. But now I have a couple of minutes before my next appointment to see if I can help. Because the brain surgeon, when he is in the middle of brain surgery and the phone is ringing, what are you going to do? No. Nah. So this is what for you to understand, guys. If you think that something is very important in your life, like a call block for the clients, Right? When we're going to do this, you know, active calling to the clients, responding to the leads, leads for up. If someone else is responding to you or calling back, I am in the middle of my brain surgery. The most important thing for me is to do this 25 calls. I'm going to call back to this client. If the client is calling you and he's ready to pay money, yeah, of course, we can potentially step up. But mainly, we are focusing on what we're doing every day. And this is the reason 99% of real estate people are not succeeding. They don't have a structure of the day. They don't know what to do. They follow both. Oh, I have a client. So I'm going to go to do this you, and I'm going to do this you, and So that's all over the place. You don't know what you're going to do in the day. You're just walking in. You're having a coffee. You're chit-chatting with her. And then you, you count your daily activities. And I'm so sorry, but five hours out of your day, you've just been talking to your colleague about nothing, about how shitty are the leads. <laughs> Okay, so how much money you will make from that? So, uh, active, as you act and you bring the opportunities, right? So if the, you don't have any leads to call, you're coming to your manager and like, okay, look, wh what else I can do? Like, what do you think I should learn? What do you think I should do? What do you think a good next developer for me to visit, right? And proactive, you are generating your own opportunities, right? So whatever is, Coming into your life, you have several sources. You have your own generating activities through the social media. You don't have to pay. It can be generic. You just have to follow up with the content and create the content and be someone. I'm not saying it's easy. It's hard. If it's easy, guys, everyone else is going to be doing this. That's why there is only 1% of successful salespeople in real estate, and 99 are not successful because they are doing the hard things for a long time. There is um, kind of an idea of the pendulum. Do you know what pendulum is? When, you know, they're trying to, let's say, hypnotize you. There is a clock and it's just going, like pendulum, just something which is just moving here and there. Yeah, so the pendulum, from one side is a pleasure, from one side is pain. It's always like this. In every activity that you do, food, you're eating too much sugar, pleasure, sweet, tasty, coming back to pain immediately. Bad health, you have problems with, you know, obesity, you have your mood swings. So the longer you push into the pleasure, the further you're going to put into pain. So whom do you think is the most successful people in everything, in business, in life? Are they pushing towards the pleasure or they're pushing towards the pain and doing things which are not in a minute bringing you 
uh, instant gratification, immediate results. They're learning, they're rehearsing, they're doing hard things. Like, it's like sports. Exactly, like training. Training, you don't get the results from the third second time. Few months you will get the results. Few months, maybe, maybe a year, yeah. right? Yeah. Depending on where you are. Exactly, I like it. So if you think you step up into the gym, step out, pull the t-shirt, six packs. Oh, there is no six Well, oh, I'm not doing it, just bullshit. I'm not gonna do that. It's exactly like this and everything. So what we are doing right now, guys, we are trying to push the pendulum towards the pain of learning, being uncomfortable, being rejected. If you're gonna be pushing this for a long time without seeing visible results, it's gonna push back. And that's gonna be a pleasure. And that's gonna be your results. Are you with me on that? And you are going, by the way, against the great, okay, so movie time. Can you hear me? Do you know this movie, right? Okay, so I'm gonna stop it for a minute. Do you know this movie? Yeah. It's a Wolf of the Wall Street. He lost his job and he's coming to the um, to meet uh, potential uh, work. Um, Jordan Belfort is an actual character. You know he exists. So he is. He wrote a lot of books after he get out of the jail, and he's doing a lot of sales training as well. So I want you to focus on how is he different outside of all of the other people. What he's actually doing, and then I'm going to ask you other questions. That's the that's end, guys. So, how is he different from others, first of all? He creates a sense of uh, urgency. From other people in the room, you've seen how the other, yeah, the age, what's the difference between him, there is a significant difference, and others, what is it? Huh? How he dressed up, guys? Yeah, yeah. You've seen the others? What is this? What is this? What is this? You, you would see, I cut a little bit. They're eating pizza, they're just like, just, just doing something on the phone, right? What he is doing here, the, the client is not seeing him. He is doing all of the gestures. He's doing the, the mimics of his face. Why? 
because it all reflects of your tonality, all of it. Have you heard the Jordan Belfort? I want you to hear the actual Jordan Belfort, and I will send you the podcast. Yeah. He is at such an, an actor with his voice. It's, uh, we cannot replicate it. I read his book. I haven't been on his training, but I read a lot of sales book in general. Then the other question to you guys. Do you think, um, which year is this movie actually? But like movie is new, but which, which year is there? You see the phones, what is this, like 80s? 80s? Okay, so do you think, do you think from 80s, it was like 80, uh, 40 years ago, till nowadays, something changed? Something changed? What changed? And what, and when the change technology happened, how it changed us? Huh? A lot. It's made, it made it easier for us uh, to access information. So before, I'm so sorry, but Jordan Belfort is the only one connection link for this company to the client because he sent a postcard. So yeah, there is an ad yeah, yeah. in the newspaper to send the postcard. So now if you want to go and find any information, what are you going to do? What, uh, Just ask chat GPT. It is going to have all the full report even. You don't even have to go to Google anymore, right? So what it makes to you as a client, are you more savvy? Are you more concerned? Do you trust the salespeople? Do you need them even? Because you can do everything yourself, right? Yeah. Okay. Here we are in a post-trust era. So guys, the techniques that Jordan Belfort is using are great. He's pitching and convincing, judge me for my losers, da, da, da. but that's been around for 40 years. So don't you think that the people are dealing, we're dealing with already heard that several times, several hundred times? Have they been scammed or have they had a bad experience of someone talking the same way? No. I'm going to be very honest with you, Mr. Klein. Oh, thank you for being honest the first time, actually. <laughs> this is like a no word, be, I'm, 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 let me be honest with you. So what I'm trying to tell you guys, if you're going to use the same technique as Jordan Belfort, we have to go in the time machine and try to sell to the postman. It's going to work. It's now it's not going to work. But the thing is that there is nothing else being yet introduced properly to the market. Everyone is doing the same. And even now, before I would tell you that these techniques are outdated, you were looking at this video and you say, oh, great, I wish I could be like him. Is it? Was it a little bit? Like, I wish I could be so confident and pitching. Yeah. yeah. But guys, you don't need that. Because it's not going to work anyway. The client going to say, yeah, well, you know, I need to think about it. Thank you. That's it. Because he has five Jordan Baffords trying to call him. It's the same as I'm always giving a date and example. As a female, you've been, you know, through different relationships, for example, trying to find your significant other. And you had a couple of guys are acting the same way and telling you the same sweet things. Oh, my baby, you're going to be my only one. So whenever you hear <laughs> from just another guy the same pitch, where is your level of trust goes? I, I, I heard this. That's not going to work. This is the best project in Dubai and it has the highest ROI. Okay, my question is, is there any company out there, is there any developer, developer out there is saying that we are actually having a 10th best project on the market? It's like we are number 10. No. Our returns are maybe like on the like average level? So what? Do you think the, do, do you think more Azizi Azizi is saying we are not the number one developer in Dubai? No, no, not the number one, but I, I'm telling you it's the how much it's the so, yeah, the position. We're not position. talking about the position here, guys. I'm talking about like every salesperson is saying that I am mm. the one who's gonna help you yeah, to I'm buy the house. The I am the best I am the most trustful I am yeah, choose yeah. me. Yeah. So if you say the same, exactly the same as every other salesperson is saying, what's going to happen? They're going to trust you or, or no? You will not. You will need to change a little bit. But if you will say something is like, 
um, yeah, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, can you just, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for the best like project in Dubai, can you help me with this? And you say, yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of people are saying this on these calls. Um, and, you know, I'm not even sure that I can even help you. I need to know a little bit more about your situation, where you're currently at your property search compared to kind of where you want to be and what you even want to achieve from this investment. So I need to ask you maybe a couple of questions to determine that. And if, you know, by the end of the school, if you feel like, hey, we might be able to help you, we can talk about possible next steps. Will that help you if I will do that? Yeah, why? Because I'm not assumptive. I'm inviting you to have a conversation. I'm not sounding like anyone. I'm, 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 I'm talking common sense. I'm not sure if I can help you. Of course I'm not sure. Because what if you want to buy something for 100,000 dirhams uh, in uh, Burj Khalifa? I'm definitely not going to be able to help you. I don't know. Right? And I'm honest with you. And I'm not saying I'm honest. <laughs> I'm just, just being a normal person. We humanize the sales. We are stepping outside of this kind of fakeness, assumptive, I'm assuming that you called me so you want to buy. No, I do not assume that. And when I'm not assuming, I'm not acting as everyone else. So I'm not inviting the sales war between. Because I'm assuming, oh, so, so uh, are you interested to invest in Dubai? Boom, sales so war. No, I never said. I, I'm just looking, right? I'm just looking. That's it. So what we're trying to do here with you guys is a little bit shift your all understanding and mentality around sales. And even if you think that now you have to pull the client in, I want you to be strong and confident and a little bit push him away. A little bit push him away. So he will pull you back. Oh, this, this guy seems, seems smart. I want to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go here. So this is the current problems of the agent. This is what you're going to face with. I'm sure Nariza <laughs> um, can tell us. Nazira, sorry, Nazira. That people are not picking up. They don't have time. Just send me the information. Information sent, no response. Is this like this? Pick up the phone, seems interested, you send the information and that client going to the uh, business protection mode, he's not responding to your messages, to your text. Uh, he was interested, stayed in touch, yeah, it's all looking great. And then uh, I need to think about it. I'm gonna call you when I'm interested. And you've done all of this huge work and you don't know what actually what will happen. You don't know, never, never go to the bottom of what was wrong with that. And you think if something was wrong with me, or you think that the clients are not serious, right? Okay, so what we're doing, the, everything which is happening in between you and the client is usually either the, uh, triggered by you as a sales resistant, or if you pull the client further who was not qualified, as Azim is saying, in the beginning, you pull him into the sales process when he has to be just put into the pipeline and, and got into follow up. This is, this is the response you might be getting. So um, what we're gonna try to create with the client through our different approach is we want the client feel safe with us to share the truth. Because most of the times when the client is telling you, yeah, that's great, that looks good, like, let me think about it. This is a polite client who just doesn't want to say to your face, I'm not gonna buy. He already probably had like, hundreds of other agents. He, was, he, he tried to be honest. He tried to say that, you know, it's just not suitable for me. But whenever he was open and honest, he have got like a punch in the face. Oh, what do you mean? Why? And it, you know, I don't want to have this. You know, I, I, feel, I feel it's easy for me just to say, just, you know, if I'm dating a girl and she's like very sticky, I'm just going to go just block her everywhere. I'm just never going to even give her a call. Sorry, I just disappeared. This is what they're doing with us, right? So whenever we're creating a, a space, what I, you know, I'm not even sure that, you know, I can help you yet. 
he feels safe. Okay, so this person is actually like a normal. I can tell him like, look, that's what I'm looking for. That's, that's, that's what my current situation. I'm not even sure if I will buy, but I wanted to have this. And he may be going to be way more open with you than every other agent he ever spoke with. Because guys, they're submitting hundreds of social media requests. You know, not only you. 10, 15, 20 agents are talking to them at the same time. And it's secondary market, uh, off-plan market is the same. Um, you got to lead what you should do, right? In the first thing, uh, you have to know exactly everything about the project he's inquired, right? You have to know the location. You have to know how the artwork, how the graphics of the ad looked like. What he's seen when he clicked, what he liked, what he potentially could see there. Was it like 1% yearly payment plan? Was it uh, 500 uh, for two bedroom unit? What was there what potentially could attract his attention, right? For you to understand and you're able to connect. Check his phone number just to understand which country it is. From your mobile, you will see that you're calling to whatever. Sometimes we get leads from Australia. Sometimes we get leads from US, guys. They're in a different time zone. You're going to call them at 12 o'clock. They're not going to respond or they're going to slam the phone on your face. Um, and the main thing, you remain calm and relax. The first stage of us communicating with the client is to open the door for the client to understand what is his situation and what potential problems he can have. By the way, everything uh, you will have in a workbook, I will send it to you later. Not presentation, because presentation is a PPT slide. I have a workbook for you to, to brush through that. So you will have, like, uh, maybe if you haven't heard something properly or you've been missing, <laughs> missing out a little bit, you have everything. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing is for us to help us uh, and client ourselves and client to see what the problem he is facing, what his situation, what the problem he is facing, and what solution potentially for his problem is. Is this even a, an, a property to buy, to be honest? Is it off-plan property or maybe he wants ready property? We don't know yet. But we have to understand it in the beginning because otherwise you're gonna end up pitching something that he's still not gonna buy. Because we cannot manufacture yes. You cannot make yes for the client. As, as much as we can think, I can still convince him. He, I'm not saying it's not going to happen. It's going to happen once in a while. If you find the client who is like really kind of weak, weak at personality. But then if this is not solution to his problem, he ends up buying the wrong thing. How happy do you think he's going to be with the purchase? How happy he will be with the purchase? How happy he will be with the property, which is actually not the right property for him? Not happy. He might be even canceling, right? How many times <clears throat> he sent the deposit and then he canceled it, and then the company just paid And you spend like one month chasing this client. Come on, your time is your number one commodity. So what else is here? You always, after first communication, you book a time and a day of your second call. I will show you how to do that in a way that it's not invasive and in a way that it's comfortable for both. Uh, the sales process that we have is going to have several stages now. So it's not only you receive the lead and then you are just, just sending him like endless Excel files and brochures and just stupid information that Let's be honest, he has hundreds of those on his phone from hundreds of agents. He doesn't even know who sent him what. It has absolutely no meaning for him. Even if he lives in Dubai, it doesn't mean he knows Dubai market. Come on, guys. If you don't work in, I don't know, restaurant business, how much do you know about restaurants? Well, you know that there is this restaurant and there is that restaurant. But, I mean, do, do you know which restaurant is well located and which is good, which is bad? No, you don't know, right? The quality of food, you don't understand that. Okay, this is what I'm coming again, and I want to emphasize about this a lot. <clears throat> if we use the Jordan Belfort techniques from the past, we're going to sound aggressive. Aggressive. It's not like we're angry, but we are aggressive, desperate, needy. We need the sale. He feels it. He feels we're desperate to sell. 
if the lady is coming to the date, the first date with the guy, I want you guys to tell me, and you feel that she's desperate to get married, she was, she's already just checking your wedding dress, yeah. how do you feel on this first date? Even if you like her, kind of. Everything, you feel it. And you, and you feel like, okay, I, 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 I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Even if she, she, my potentially, if she would not be acting that way, it could be your future wife. Just because she's acting in a way that shows that she's needy, you don't want to go with her. And this is how 99% of agents act. 90. Needy, attached, they want to sell, they're not interested in what you have as a problem or you want you what do you think a solution is they just want to put whatever they had oh yeah you, you okay so uh, should I book the meeting with the developer on the zoom so you can just ask the question no I never I never told you I'm interested in this development even yet right so what's the use of you booking the the meeting with the developer you think the developer gonna sell him just because he has like a magic whatever stake and no it's not gonna happen Unfortunately, you can have lots of meetings with developers. You can waste lots of time with Zoom. We can hope and pray that this one's going to work. Okay, this one's going to work. If you do not know how the structure should be, hoping and praying is, again, very unreliable way to make your income. And you want to have income, right? You want to have consistent income. You don't want to just have commission today. You want to have understanding if you're going to be having commission all the time. And those who've been on the market long enough, we are now in the peak, we're going up, the prices are growing. So what's been happening from 2015? The prices are going down and the recession came for the real estate. It was very hard to sell. Off plan market almost didn't exist because the people were scared to invest. Sometimes, but not like now, right? It was not like now at all. And guys, it's gonna come, it's gonna come back. Of course. Okay, guys, and then when the market is slowing down, which agent are going to be still making a lot of money? Those who have a extended high level sales skills. Those are keep going to make money because they, they're able to create this connection and conversation with the client, right? They're going to shift to do the secondary market. It's not a problem. It's not about the market. They have skills which they need to succeed in any industry to go to sell the cars or I don't know, do business to business, anything. Okay. So how your client feels about you in the first 10, 15 seconds. If you speak fast, and we know that you've been receiving the calls from the salespeople, if you are a little bit scared and uncertain, you're afraid to make a call. If you worry and sound it scripted, what do you mean when you sound scripted? When you're reading the script, your it's script is not inside of you. It's not internalized. You're reading the script. Even if I will give you the best possible script that people are making millions, if you're going to read it, it's going to be rubbish. It's better for you to sound yourself, even to use the script. When the people in Ray White are telling me, "Yeah, Olga, but you know, I'm just I, I don't like to use the script. I don't sound natural." I was like, "Of course, because you have to memorize it." Hello. We have to memorize it. And I'm asking you, what's your favorite actor? Do you like George Clooney? Do you like Tom Cruise? Anyone? Huh? Okay, Brad Pitt. Does he sound scripted in his movies? Do you think that he's memorizing each and every word that he's saying? That that's why he's on the level of the Brad Pitt. Because he got so good, he out rehearsed, out of memorize out practice everyone else guys that's why we believe in this character we don't, oh that's a good script oh he's reading the script really good we don't even think about this right it's him playing a character yeah <clears throat> we're getting brush off no responses i want to really gonna quickly go through the sales resistance again guys the sales resistance is something which Previously, uh, we've been taught to uh, uh, break down with report, create a report with the client, just be nice, talk about, you like fishing, I like fishing, I can see it. 
It doesn't work, guys, anyway. They know what you're doing. They know about report. They know that you're just trying to get nicey nicey with them. I'm so sorry, I just, you know, I just called you about the like properties. It's like, what is that about? Like, really, let's just get to the point and you will find these clients. So what I'm trying to tell you is not that it's not important to create a natural flow or if the client is talkative and he's interested to know more about you, that's fantastic. But if you're forcing, okay, before we talk about business, like what, tell me, what is this, you know, you kind of doing in your free time just to see, oh, I've seen you're calling from Oman. How is weather down there? No, guys, they know that. That exactly you sound like the same as everyone else. By the way, if you build rapport once in the beginning of the conversation, it doesn't mean that you have it for the whole time. As soon as you start acting <laughs> in a salesy way, as soon as you start acting needy, the sales resistance will go up. That's why what we do consistently, we are being agreeable and disarming. Disarming is we are not, you know, the, which I think there's a lot of MMA type of fights. Like when the two guys are just on the floor, basically just, I don't know, cuddling each other. It looks like that. They're using in these techniques the force of other person to win. So if the client is attacking, I'm not attacking against of him. I'm going with him, you know, I'm, I'm kind of supporting him, right? So, oh yeah, I'm busy now. Oh yeah, uh, that's not a problem, I guess you should be. Um, that's why I'm calling kind of to arrange a more appropriate time for us to have a conversation. Would that make sense? I'm not speeding up. I'm not rushing. I'm busy. Yeah, I guess you probably should be. I have myself just a couple of moments before my next appointment so the reason I was trying to understand what would be for us an appropriate time to have a conversation right um, disarming my favorite I'm not sure if I can even help you yet it's so scary to say guys <laughs> is it do you feel yeah what if you gonna think that I don't want to help him no guys uh, uh, if you try that you will feel how it works. But you have to be in a nice tone. And I'm not, I'm not even sure that I can help you yet. Something like this, right? And the things we have to practice a lot. Um, or if the client, oh yeah, but I'm not like in a position to buy, I'm not looking for buy. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure you're not gonna make any move unless that makes sense for you, right? Do I'm trying to convince you? No. And my favorite, oh, that, that's not a problem. Anything they say, oh, I mean, I, I'm not looking for anything right now. Yeah, yeah, that, that's not a problem. Yeah, that's not a problem. It sounds like I'm the attached, I don't care. But I'm not like don't care, but I'm not like an asshole don't care. I'm saying that that's, that's not a problem. We can still kind of understand more what about you've been looking for and maybe what changed, if that makes sense for you? Okay, so sales process, how it is now in Ray White. <clears throat> we have Facebook lead. This is the first call. We are outbound call and inbound call is kind of a different. So inbound call when the client called you or he's already registered on your schedule for the Zoom call, right? Outbound, it potentially can be a Facebook lead or any lead who requested for you to call back, but he doesn't know the time the person is calling or um, who is calling, right? He doesn't know who is calling yet. And there is a cold calling that they do not expect your call. That's a different thing. So on the first outbound call, we are there to qualify them. Yeah, we got these leads that you're receiving. We're there, they're totally fine. What attracted the attention? That's my favorite one. Why they responded to our ad. This is what we're asking them, and I'm gonna show you the script further. The reason is that moves the attention from you, salesperson, send me the brochures and Excel sheets. So this actually attracted your attention. So you are telling me and telling yourself, first of all, reminding you 
What attracted your attention in the first place? Oh, yeah, I just wanted to do... You, you, you got me. There, there was um, just a quick um, recap from the uh, one uh, um, kind of research that's been done. The people are standing in the line to make a bet for the horse. It's been done in UK. You know all these races and you can bet for the horse. So when they ask the people who are about to kind of pay for the bet, which horse do you think going to win and, and which kind of probability, they will say, yeah, I'm putting on the, this horse so that potentially it's going to win. So then they ask them, but then they already bet on that. They ask them again, but the draw hadn't happened yet, right? The, the race hadn't happened yet. They ask them, so how confident are you now that the horse that you put on money is going to win? Oh, yeah, I'm very confident. It's because they already did some action on that, and that's because they already told once to themselves that what they think is going to happen, right? Um, no. I will advise to look at your own behavior. When you tell them to several people that, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, or this is good, you start to believe in this more. Sometimes, this is what's happened when the people are telling the stories, fake stories, and then after they told the story three, four times, they kind of start believing in the story. Fake it, fake it till they make it, right? So this is what they, we want them to feel, guys. Then we're looking for the problem. And then we qualify if they have money, because this is the most important thing, if they have money or not to buy our product. Then if they qualify, we book a Zoom call. The Zoom call is not the Zoom call with a developer yet. Nah, not that one, because we don't know. Over here, we don't know which one, which project we're going to sell. That's not enough. It's not enough sales process. Over here, we're starting to build the gap from where they are to where they want to be. Thanks to this gap, right? Only thanks to this gap, they're going to feel the urgency to change their current situation. They're going to feel the need to buy your solution. If there is no gap, they're going to keep fishing. So the way you build a gap is by asking the questions, making them understand the problem through your questions and then move forward because you're creating your internal urgency. What means internal urgency? All the salespeople in real estate create external urgency. Hi, Mr. Client. You know, we don't have much units left. There's the last unit. If you're not going to buy, you're going to lose. Yeah? Is it? Yeah. Everyone is saying that. True? This is, this is the last car. <laughs> Everyone. So, do, do, I, do I believe it as a client? Well, I was like, look. And it doesn't matter. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fade away as soon as I speak, like, cancel the phone with you. I'm, I'm, I'm having my thoughts, like, do I really even want this unit? Like, blah, blah. That's why you keep sending the links to payment, and it's going to go to nowhere. No one is paying you back. But if you ask me, okay, so, Olga, <clears throat> But what will happen if, you know, you're not going to do anything about it, you know, end up not buying any property and, you know, you keep paying rent the same way as you do now and then potentially the market going to stay for a couple of years at the same level and, you know, the prices are going to go up. What's going to happen then? Oh, yeah, well, I don't know. I'm probably going to, like, lose a lot of money. How do you mean by lose a lot of money? I'm not happy with this answer yet, guys. I'm probing deeper. Oh, yeah, you know, I'm I probably, you know, I'm just paying now like 120. I'm end up like losing like what? 200, like, and this is me, salesperson. So it's, it's probably you're going to lose like 280 just like down the drain with just to the landlord pocket over these years. Yeah, it seems like that. <laughs> 